So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So what I have here today is the 2024 GWM Canon Lux 4x4 Automatic. So this is the middle team of the Canon lineup here in the Philippines. So I'd like to thank everyone at GWM Philippines and to GWM Alabang for lending me out this unit for a couple of days now. I've driven this a lot now to Alabang, to Carmona, you name it. I've enjoyed driving a pickup truck again. As you all know me, I was a former pickup truck owner myself. So in Immediately, you all know me, I am very biased with the Strada and Ford Ranger. And then, I parked one of these beside a Ford Ranger itself. Well, it's a Ranger Sport. This thing is really, really huge. So, this is by far one of the biggest normal brand pickup trucks I've ever driven. And to the point, this Canon Lux 4x4 is almost as big as an F-150 itself in terms of cabin space. So you get LED, DRLs, and headlights, and you get halogen fog lamps down here below. And like what I said too, in my s 4x4 off-road review, you have the world's largest car badge over here. And as well, you get a very chromish grill here, which is alright for pickup trucks. And then ground clearance is at 230 millimeters, which is actually bigger than some of its competition because most of them, like the Ranger, they're like 220 millimeters millimeters and the ground clearance again is as tall like with the current Ranger Raptor and a Hilux GRS. Pretty interesting. So as well you get 18 inch wheels and this specific land out unit I have here is running on saline all terrain tires. So these are much different compared like with the 19s and very meaty off-road tires like with the S-Lux 4x4 during my off-road review. As you can see you can modify this like with any other pickup truck if you want only. So you get a garnish with the GWM logo over here. Here in the side profile, this is a very, very long vehicle and the side steps are pretty useful. And having had this for a couple of days now, I do love this bottom profile of this Canon. I mean, it gives it a little bit more flair, I have to say. You get repeaters here too in the side mirrors and there's one camera on the right side mirror itself that is for your corner camera which I find very, very handy. I'll demo that too later on. So, pairing this Canon Lux 4x4, well, it's still pretty much the same like with the Canon S Lux 4x4, but I'll still show you anyways. So, powering this is still the same 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engine that produces 161 horsepower and 400 and newton meters of torque. So, this one too is mated to a 8 speed ZF automatic transmission. And what I did not discuss during my S Lux 4x4 off road review is the transfer case itself. So, this one is supplied by Borg Warner themselves. So, yes, they are very rich in history for supplying four wheel drive systems, turbochargers, you name it. Although, unlike any other pickup truck, there's a weird way of turning off this 4x4 and activating 4x2 aka rear wheel drive only. I'll get to that later on. So here in the engine bay, here is your turbocharger. It's wrapped in a lot of heat shield. And two, if you notice with the power figures alone, 161 horsepower and 400 newton meters. It's not the most powerful out there, but trust me on that when I get to drive this and show you later. This one is really, really good to drive. So back here in the side profile, so you did notice in this specific uh, Canon Luxes we have here in the Philippines, we don't get the extreme off-road types like, for example, comparing with the Hilux GRS or Ranger Raptor. Like, there's no cladding here for the S-Lux, the Lux, so on and so forth. Hopefully, those will come soon too in our country. So here now at the rear of this GWM Canon Lux, I think this is my favorite looking rear of all the pickup trucks we have here in the Philippines. Maybe it's just because of these LED tail lights. They look very, very unique, I have to say. So you have your usual GWM badges over here, a reverse camera, more on the specs too later. And surprisingly for a middle variant pickup truck, I was expecting not this to have an assist tailgate, but look at that, with one finger, even the smallest person who was with me yesterday can lift this tailgate with no issues whatsoever although the assist only is only here on the right side but hey at least it still works and then one hilarious thing i noticed too here in the load bed there are two crosses here on either side the name just kidding just kidding <laughs> so anyways the load bed here is as well one of the largest two in this class too okay comparing again with the ford ranger sport the one in i saw in the car park yeah i can confirm this is one of the larger ones yes the ranger has a longer load bed but this one in all aspects the height the width this one is much much bigger so as well the payload capacity of this is 1130 kilograms which is actually on par with its competition too sadly though unlike with the some of the competition too there's no 220 volt outlet and other goodies here but at least you have load bed cover and then for 
tie down hooks on either side i actually dyed my shoes here after the slux 4x4 off-road event yeah i put my shoes here it handled them pretty easily so that's about it with the engine the exterior and the load bed of this canon lux let's check out the interior still walking still walking so this is the interior of the canon lux well Visually, yes, it looks exactly the same like with the S-Lux models, but you can spot all the differences now if you drive the S-Lux 4x4 and this Lux 4x4 back to back. So here in the door card, surprisingly, yet again for the middle brand, it's all the squeegee material and the soft leather pads over here. And then you have your usual window switches over here, along too with the black brush trim here. I was expecting this to be all plastic yet again. You have cubby spaces, cup holders on either side. So sadly, my big water jug doesn't fit so as well why I stopped doing a uh, water jug test because this one is really really big but I found a place where this one fits it's here in the center with on the big part of the cup holders and you can fit small bottles and another small jug right on the right side we'll get back to this later so here on the left side of the dashboard you have an air conditioning vent side mirror adjustments adjustments for the brightness of the instrument cluster and two headlight leveler adjustments so I found this really really handy for the first time because Yet again, as I said, this Canon Lux is a very, very large pickup truck and you sit really, really high among one of the highest uh, seating positions I've ever encountered so far in any uh, pickup truck and let's not include the F1 SVT Raptor, FYI only. So, two underneath, you have extra compartments too and then tilt and telescopic too for the steering wheel. It's a bit hard but at least there is and then here in the middle you have an analog tachometer and speedometer with a color instrument cluster right in the middle so this is the displays you can use there's TPMS too and to adjust all of that it's all here on the left side of the steering wheel and you have your cruise control and phone connectivity buttons on the right side so I said cruise control because sadly for this Lux model this does not come with adaptive cruise control but in my one, two, three, three days already, one more to go. So in my entire days of land out, you all know me, I've never touched this cruise control once. So here in the steering wheel itself, okay, it's polyurethane, but it's still nice to the touch. And I love too, it's four spoke. You have an SCV button over here. When you press that, that activates your corner camera, but that's only applies for the right side. I found that very, very helpful because yet again, as I said, this is a very wide and very tall pickup truck. And the system will automatically deactivate if you go past 20 kilometers per hour I wish it was a bit more like some other vehicles that their system shut down after 30 kilometers per hour and above but sadly in my entire land out this only goes until 20 but at least uh, driving this around it so I, I just leave it on most of the time just to change lanes here and there and see all the little pesky motorcycle riders yeah this is really really good okay I have a lot of nitpicks with this Canon Lux so this is one of them the paddle shifters are a little bit too far to reach so I have to do this like a what like a Praga race car gotta be honest but I found this very very useful I'll get back to this too in the test drive segment so we have an engine start stop button over here here and visually here in the interior like what I said did the s lux review yeah it's very very nice here you have squeegee material all around and this nice mesh trim here for the passenger side and then glove box okay that's all right and then here's my reaction with my sister's first impressions when she sat in this car the brand is uh, GWM the boom as you said boom height step check I feel tall. This is taller than our other favorite pickup. What do you think? I can step properly. <laughs> And then here in the middle, you have a 9-inch infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So the response time of the infotainment itself is very crisp. And air conditioning here is really, really good. So not Nissan level, not Navara level. However, it's as good as like with the Ford Ranger, Mazda BT-50. It got cold here pretty fast even though I parked this under the sun for a long time. So here too is one of the biggest differences compared with the S-Lux models. You have a lot of missing safety features features but you only have one over here for your dynamic stability assistant but hey at least there is so sadly there's no front sensors and no forward collision warning this is that one feature I always look for in every new vehicle now but at least two you get reverse cameras and yet again the corner camera which can look forwards and backwards 
And then another thing to take note to, this does not have a 360 degree camera, which could have come in handy, but I'm willing for, to forgive this because yet again, this is a needed brand. So to first time I was able to try both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. What I have to say here, along with my friend Forbes, shout out to him, this is among one of the cleanest infotainment systems I've ever seen. Just look at it. So for Apple CarPlay, I don't see any pixelations whatsoever, even with Android Auto. Yes, as you can see, there's a little bit of a delay scrolling through the maps from left to right, up and down, yeah, but Looking at it wise, it's even better Galaxy than like with the Ford Ranger because the Rangers only occupies half of the screen, not the whole screen itself. This one, yeah, consumes the whole screen, which is good. So below the infotainment system, you have your air conditioning controls and then few blanks over here. Something like with the S-Lux model and two, you have your hill descent control and electronic stability control button. So small nitpick too, but I don't mind it. There's no lights over here for like your volume, so it might be hard to find if you're the this at night but then again you can control the volume right here on the left side of this thing but yet again if you have a DJ that's what they need to look for so anyways further down below you have two USB ports one 12 volt socket and a pad for your phone so this does not have two uh, wireless charging pads sadly so here in the center console itself so you have your xenomorph alien head gear lever itself three blanks here on the right your four low button and then electronic parking brake and your auto hold function so interesting button I found com since I had this for quite a while now unlike with some of the pickup competitors where you have to adjust your steering feel through driving modes in this Canon Lux and s Lux models you can do them separately so example if you want to put this in sport mode but the steering at its lightest setting you can do that so these are the modes for the steering so there's sports mode comfort and then light mode so I actually drove the s Lux 4x4 on my off-road test the sting was very very light so off-roading this will be very easy but as a daily being honest I'd rather leave it in comfort mode not sports mode because comfort is just the right amount of weight and feel of course you all know me I love power steering uh, steerings sports mode is not that heavy but there's still a lot of heft to it but uh, to be honest I just leave it in comfort mode because yeah I just want to chill in this vehicle chill <laughs> anyways two here are your driving modes so there's a swivel wheel right here in the middle and there's this nice sound too when you change mode so you have eco standard aka normal mode and sports mode so more on the driving modes later on too in the test drive so you leave you first in standard mode yet again what I showed you earlier you have two cup holders over here so in case if you're not putting anything in your cup holders you you have this tray you can move it forwards and backwards and then open the center console box up there's a decent amount of space and I like to you can literally fit a water jug just inside and can close it properly and like with the S-Lux the console box is leather up which is good and still nice to detach and then as well big highlight for me with this Lux model are the seats yes sadly these are all now manually operated compared to the electronic adjustments for both front seats for the s Lux models but pretty easy to maneuver because you all know me I came from a very old school car but the seats here in general is very soft and yeah surprisingly out of a lot of bolstering but it's yeah, so comfortable here to sit in headdress pretty good too gives me a straight neck and what else ah, above here you have your LED lights and then visor you have your vanity mirror only they don't extend to so one thing I missed during my s Lux 4x4 review I was looking for the sunglasses holder which most cars are located here in the mid top middle for this GWM cannons they're located here on the left side of the driver you can act it like a grab handle if you want but I don't recommend it but fitting shades in here is actually pretty handy so yeah that's about here in front of this Canon Lux 4x4 let's check out the rear seats so this is the rear seats of the Canon Lux so in the door card exactly the same like the ones in front and like with the S-Lux model sadly for the rear doors there's plastic above here it's not the squeegee material but still retains at least the leather right here on the for your elbows and around the window switch itself so two you have cubby spaces cup holders on either side sadly 
a big water jug will not fit. So having had this for a couple of days now, so I brought a lot of friends here at the back. And they said, and I will agree, this is among one of the most spacious rear pickup trucks in this class. So feet room, knee room, infinite, and headroom, I'm 5'4 by the way. This is still pretty good. Two map pockets on either side, and then here in the middle, you have two air conditioning vents and a lone USB port. So uh, big neat pick of mine, which I always find too in every other pickup truck. There is no 220 volt outlet down there, sadly. But at least like with all GWMs, you get fire extinguishers. I was looking for that earlier. It's just underneath with the Velcro yet again. And then here in the middle, we have a central arm. Sadly, no two cup holders or cup holders rather. But Lauren sat here in the back. She seemed pretty happy and she was able to lie down on this. And it's really soft too. And then the seats here, it's the same like the ones in front. Very soft yet again. And then in the middle, there's just a small transmission tunnel. And sitting here in the rear, you can fit at least four or more people here in the back. And like what I showed you in the SLAX 4x4 off-road review, this is one of the few pickup trucks that I know. You can fold the seats individually. So this one's fold 60-40 and yet again, you, there's storage just underneath over here. And then you can fold up the cushions too individually so you just literally pull this one up and then folding down you just put the strap down and push it down simple as that and two since it's so easy to fold up the seats there's nothing underneath so putting down an umbrella or larger items is very easy to so one very weird thing that's been removed for this lux model compared with the top of the line there's no rear center headrest hmm very weird so yeah that's about it here with the interior of this canon lux Let's go for a drive. One cool thing too, I'm in reverse gear or drive, it will not move. Very good with a GWM. So before we drive, well actually just waiting for one of the agents to miss Josephine. Also thank you to her so much. She's literally the person who made this all possible because she invited me to GWM Alabang for the off-road event and she got me in contact with everyone at GWM Philippines. So shout out to you miss. So a few more things I missed here in the infotainment system. Comparing with the S-Lux model, this only has four speakers compared to the six of the S-Lux. So the sound system is pretty good, not gonna lie. It this one's a DTS sound system but I found out it lacks a little bit of bass and a bit more detail but overall this quality is still pretty good and more safety features that have been removed so this still has two airbags compared to the four of the uh, S-Lux model update so this specific lux 4x4 was an early model that's why it's not equipped with the rear diff lock but current models are already equipped with this feature so finally driving this Canon Lux 4x4. So first impressions when the unit was delivered to my house. Yeah, maneuvering this thing around in tight city spaces and streets, it's very hard. It's, I gotta be honest because yet again, this is a long and huge car. That's the theme of this review actually. So as you notice too, there is no button separation for drive and manual mode. But we found out, well, I found out later on that you have to pull it again to activate manual mode. So I find that hilarious because I was scrambling to find manual mode because I thought you have to do it only for the paddle shifters and then speaking of paddle shifters so the transmission of this yet again it's an 8-speed ZF automatic transmission okay it is no BMW or any other European car which have the same transmission however I find this pretty smooth and in my experience only I found out that this gear hunts a lot I mean if you put it in eco mode but I left this in normal mode most of the time uh, yeah, it tends to gear hunt quite a lot. So like around 50, 60 kilometers per hour. I was already like what in 6, 7 gear already. And even up to what, 90 kilometers per hour. Yes, yeah, already in the top gear, 8th gear. So yeah, 2 with the driving modes, equal normal and sport mode yet again. Uh, that's how you activate to the 4x4 system. Well, I found out later on, but since I was at GWM Alamang, on how this system works. So in eco mode, this is literally rear wheel drive only. And then in standard mode, it's still four wheel drive but rear wheel bias. So that's why I always left it in um, standard mode, normal mode. And then in sport mode, it's full as uh, 4x4 mode. And then here, demonstration or automatic mode. I mean, it took a while to kick down, but yeah, the performance of this, as I said earlier, this is not the most powerful in terms of power torque in this class. However, it still gets the job done. And I noticed too, yes, there's slight delay sometimes with the transmission. However, it is very eager to downshift and at a standstill, okay, watch this, just automatic mode, floored it. Okay, just delay, but 
Whoa. Yeah. Okay, the torque figure yet again 400 Newton meters of torque. It won't push you back so much in your seat, but once you get up to speed, it's pretty good too. And I did notice too, despite being a diesel engine, this one I found out is pretty uh, rev happy, I have to say. And yeah, being a 4x4, as you can see in some of the shots, immediately, even with Lauren when she sat in the rear seats, yeah, this is bouncy per usual like with every other pickup that I did find the ride though not as, as com uncomfortable as with a Hilux and well, normal Hilux the non-GRS models and a Mazda BT50 slash Isuzu D-Max so I find it still a tad softer than those cars but this one I gotta be honest this is not as good as my other ever favorite pickup truck the uh, Mitsubishi Strata this still gets the job done of course this is like with every other pickup truck too yet again this is running on leaf springs and then here just driving around Alabang yeah it is quite bumpy here and there but it's expected this is what this is common in every pickup truck so you turn this and yeah it, the turning circle is really wide it's again expected like with most pickup trucks and then the handling wise is pretty good actually as i mentioned the driving modes here and there yeah i just leave it in comfort mode because it has just the right amount of heft. I mean in highways I did I do put it in sport mode sometimes just to have a sense of uh, security only. So yeah look pretty easy to drive. So first timers who want a pickup truck yeah I highly recommend this vehicle because it, it's pretty easy to drive. Around 60 to 100 kilometers per hour like at highway speeds. Okay from here like fourth fifth gear. Okay here fourth gear and then I'll floor it. Then it goes. Yeah, it tends to a bit com a bit confused sometimes this transmission because yeah, it, it has to shift down a lot of gears. But I found the technique for that. So remember the paddle shifter. So here in the shot, look, it's kind of quite a reach, but then again, it at least there is. So what I found out too at highway speeds, so around like 70 to 90 kilometers per hour, it's around that the top gear already, around six gear or eighth gear. So to uh, get the best response time immediately just push down the paddle once only then I found out it jumps from like example 6 gear to 4 gear immediately so the transmission tuning of this okay I'll be honest it's a little bit of hit and miss but there's a lot more hits than misses a good job on the tuning for this so as well body lean yes it's expected because yet again this is a very large and long vehicle so one thing too on highway speeds and just here around in Alabang the NVH of this this one is pretty good so like what I said doing most pickup truck reviews okay here running at speeds you can hear the diesel engine but it's not as loud or as brush as some of the others like example this the BT50 yeah the end feature is top notch even though I am running on off-road tires the tire noise is not present at all even at the high speeds like a hundred kilometers per hour or 110 120 being honest only yeah I don't hear tire noise whatsoever and at highway speeds too, this thing is pretty stable and yeah, gunning it in the highway is actually pretty fun to drive and overtaking is like with every other pickup that like with the torque, yeah, it gets up to speed pretty quickly. You hear that? I went over metal seats already here on the road, so here's to you again. That's so, that's so good. And too, with the suspension, there's not much suspension tubs here and there. Yes, with the over extreme kinds of humps, yes, there's suspension tub, but you won't notice it that much, to be honest. And then visibility all around, actually not that bad. Again, you have to watch out for the load bed. And yet again, going back to the, what, the ride of this. Yes, it's bouncy, but it's more bouncier there for the year, but here you can feel it jittering up and down i was a former pickup owner myself it's it's not bad whatsoever i've fallen in love with this pickup truck i even took it here to kaira showroom alabang yeah it's pretty lovely and for this canon for some hilarious reason since i did driven this for a couple of days now all around metro manila and the province too this is somewhat of a head turner because yeah, the sitting position here is really, really tall. I drove side by side with a previous gen Ford Ranger Raptor. I'm tall or a bit taller than him and I get the looks from other people uh, walking in the streets and saying like, what the heck is this car? It, because yes, again, this is so huge. And as well, driving alongside a Hyundai Staria, a minivan, 
yeah, I'm as tall as them. And to uh, shout out to my friend Orbs again, having parked in his condo for a uh, few nights already. Yeah, this one is longer than a previous generation Star X. Yeah, this thing, as I said, the theme of this review, this is pretty, pretty huge. So. Performance of this yacht, even though this is a very large and heavy car, this thing is so much fun today. Not as fun as a Stada, I will admit that. But I would say, I think this is a little bit more fun than the current Ford Ranger. Yeah, call me crazy. I, you know, I'm very biased. That's the benchmark uh, pickup truck at the moment. But this one, this one is better. And yet again, with the ground clearance of this of 230 millimeters, that's even taller than some of the standard pickups. And this is as tall like with the Hilux GRS the current Ford Ranger Raptor. What else do you need in the pickup truck? This ticks all the boxes for me. Would I buy one personally? Yes, I would. Uh, one thing though, I want to try out with the Canon Lux 4x2 model and see how the ride compares to this 4x4 model. Since I said uh, this one's quite bouncy, I dare hear a bit of a suspension that, that will only be present if the arms are very, very extreme. So as well, few more tech bits on the engine. So this one has an automatic cutoff feature. So I know that technology is present like with Pagani Huayras. Last time I recall. So in case this crashes, well, knock on wood, I won't crash at all. Yeah, this one will cut off the fuel supply of this to avoid fuel spillage and fire. So I've never seen that in any other normal brand, to be honest. And then, yeah, here, again, bumpy road. At speeds now, 60 kilometers per hour. Yeah, it's bouncy, but it's still somewhat tame. I did mention it's not as good as the Scudder, but I would say the ride for this is much better than the Hilux NBT50 slash D-Max. And two, let's not forget fuel economy. Okay, it's something less to be desired of if you're driving at EDSA highway heavy traffic. Yeah, so the best I got was 7 kilometers per liter. Heavy traffic, but on a good day like today, today is a Sunday, I would manage 8.4 kilometers per liter. Okay, that's pretty respectable. Hi, future John here at Carmona. I won't disclose exactly where I am at the moment. So, I was able to do today my best city fuel average of 9.4 kilometers per liter. Well, the highway is more or less the same. I'll mention it later in the video. I found out the driving modes, it works the opposite way. Eco mode tends to be thirstier and then normal just in the middle. And then sport mode is perfect for highway. And then highway speeds, okay, if you're gunning it all the time like me, and Reagan, shout out to you too. Uh, we got 11.9 kilometers per liter. And then finally, the best one I got, absolutely light footed, like on the way from my home to GWM here in Alabang, I got 14.1 kilometers per liter. Very impressive for, again, the size of this thing. So at least uh, it rectifies of having this transmission to gear on quite a lot, but it makes it up for the fuel economy. So yet again, pretty impressive for what this is. So for the cost of all this, this Canon Lux 4x4 is at 1,318,000 pesos. That price point is insane. So this is like in some of the base territory uh, pickup trucks in this segment already. And for this Canon Lux, this is the middle trim brand. You get almost everything you need already. I find this complete already. And then if you want the 4x2 model, review coming soon. That one cost 1,198,000 pesos. Yes, there is uh, quite a big jump from this 4x4 and the 4x2 model. But for the 1,198,000 pesos of the Canon Lux 4x2, that's exactly the same like with a base model Ford Ranger XL 4x4. So, GWM, you got a stealer here. I love this thing. I'm Again, I'm a truck owner before. I would definitely buy one of this. I don't want to bring this back anymore to GWM Philippines, but kidding aside, yeah, this is how good this uh, Canon Lux is. Let's not forget too with the Canon S Lux. That's a more complete car than this. But for me, yeah, this middle team is very, very much worth it. So yeah, that concludes my in-depth full review of this Canon Lux 4x4 model. So I'd like to thank everyone here at GWM Philippines and to GWM Alabang for making this all possible. So thank you for lending this car for a couple of days with me and I'm in love.
I'm in love with this truck. So as well, I wasn't expecting to get this truck in the first place. So coming soon with that other truck that I'll be driving from GWM. The hint is, I've driven it before on my channel. So stay tuned again for the full review of that. So two, thank you again to GWM Alabang and to Miss Josephine for making this all possible. So these are contact details and the address of the temporary showroom here at Alabang. They'll be located soon at Westgate Alabang, which their dealership will be a lot bigger. So hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you with more future car reviews and future GWM reviews. Bye-bye.